let me tell you about an old friend of mine named Pythagoras. Now Pythagoras was an old dude who lived around 530 BC. He was a philosopher, he created his own religion, but is most famous for his work in mathematics, specifically the Pythagorean Theorem. Now the Pythagorean Theorem works on all right triangles. Here we have a right triangle. You know it's a right triangle because it has a 90 degree angle. The short sides of a right triangle known as legs. We refer to these sides as A and B. The hypotenuse is the longest side of the right triangle, always opposite from the 90 degree angle. We call that the hypotenuse and we recognize that as C. And Pythagoras discovered something phenomenal that if you squared A, added it to the square of B, it would equal the hypotenuse or C squared. And that's where we get the Pythagorean theorem that you may have heard before. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Let's check out how this works on a triangle with some actual side lengths. Here we have a right triangle with sides 3, 4, and a hypotenuse of 5. My two legs are going to be 3 and 4. That's going to be my A and B. So if we use our Pythagorean theorem here with our A of 3 and our B of 4, we're going to get 3 squared plus 4 squared. Now, if this is truly a right triangle, that should equal the hypotenuse squared or 5 squared. Let's see if that actually works out. Well, 3 squared is 9, plus 4 squared is 16, 4 times 4. Does that equal 5 squared? Or 5 times 5, 25. And 16 plus 9 is 25, and indeed, that does equal 25. Boom! The Pythagorean theorem works on this right triangle. Here we've got another triangle with legs 2 and 3, and a hypotenuse of 6. Is this a right triangle? Well, to find out if it's a right triangle, let's try using the Pythagorean Theorem. We have our A and our B, that's going to be 2 squared plus 3 squared. Let's see, does that equal our hypotenuse squared, 6 squared? Let's see if it does. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 squared is 9. Does that equal 6 squared, 36? 9 plus 4, that's going to be 4, 13, sorry. Does that equal to 36? No, of course it doesn't. So, what we can conclude about this triangle is it is not a right triangle. We can also use the Pythagorean Theorem to solve for missing sides of triangles. Here, let's solve for x on the right triangle. First, let's find what our a is, b is, and our c is. Well, I see that the right angle is here in this corner. That means my hypotenuse is across from that. So, x is going to be my c. My legs are going to be 5 and 12. Those are going to be my A and my B. Let's plug that into the Pythagorean Theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That'll give us A squared, 5 squared, plus B squared, 12 squared, equals C squared or X squared. Now, let's go ahead and just do some solving. That'll be 25 plus 144 equals X squared. If I did 144 plus 25 right here, that's going to give me 169, that's going to equal x squared. Now in order to solve for this x squared here, we want to take the square root of both sides, because remember, the square root is the opposite of an x squared. So, if I square root this side, and I square root this side, I can find out the square root of 169, that's going to be 13 times 13, so my x is going to equal 13. Boom! Let's see if we can solve for this x here. First, let's find our right angle. That's going to be right here. That box means it's the right angle. And uh, then let's identify what our hypotenuse is. Our hypotenuse is going to be 17 here. That's going to equal c. Our legs are going to be 15. Let's let that be a. And we could let our x BB. Now it doesn't matter which one's A and which one's B, but make sure that those are each of the legs. Next, let's do our Pythagorean Theorem. We'll have A squared, that's 15 squared, plus B squared, that's going to be X squared, and that's going to equal C squared, or 17 squared. If I solve those out, I square 15 to get 225, then I have X squared, I'll keep that the same, and then I square 17, 17 times 17 is 289. Let's go ahead and keep solving for x. First, let's get x by itself over here. So we're going to subtract 225 from each side of our equal sign. That's going to leave us with 
x squared equals 289 minus 225 is going to be 64. Now we have our x squared. Let's take the square root of each side. That'll just leave us with an x on the left. Equal to square root of 64 is 8 and 8. So x equals 8. Thank you, Pythagoras. One great thing about the Pythagorean theorem is it works for all right triangles. Look at this big mess here. This is a lot more complicated than what we've been dealing with. However, if I look at this picture, I can see that there is a right triangle right here. So that means the Pythagorean theorem can be applied to this triangle even though it's attached to a larger picture. You're going to have some homework problems that have some right triangles hidden within a larger picture. All you have to do is find the right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem on that.